Young Australians would be forgiven in thinking that Australian Prime Ministers never last a full term. For the last 11 years, not one Prime Minister has served out an entire term. Not one. In 2007, Kevin Rudd was elected as the new Labor Prime Minister by popular vote. Throughout the first part of his term, he maintained very high approval ratings. However, in mid-2010, there were rumblings of a leadership spill with Julia Gillard as the main contender. Hours before the vote on 24th of June 2010, knowing that he didn't have the votes to win, Kevin Rudd resigned as Prime Minister, leaving Julia Gillard to assume the leadership position unopposed, making her the first Australian female Prime Minister. On 27th of February 2012, Julia Gillard was facing her own leadership spill by former PM Kevin Rudd. She won overwhelmingly by 71 votes to 31. Less than a month later, on 21st of March 2013, another leadership spill occurred. However, Kevin Rudd publicly announced that he would not contend. Again, Julia Gillard was elected unopposed. But of course, that's not the end of the story. On 26th of June 2013, another leadership spill occurred. This time, Kevin Rudd came out victorious. He didn't last very long though. Only a few months later, on 7th of September 2013, the Australian public voted him out and he resigned as Prime Minister on 18th of September 2013. Tony Abbott became the new Prime Minister. Tony Abbott almost lasted two years, but on the 14th of September 2015, a leadership spill was held and he lost 54 votes to 44 to Malcolm Turnbull. Just as we thought that maybe the Australian Prime Ministership had settled down, on 21st of August 2018, Turnbull survived a leadership challenge by Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton, winning by 48 votes to 35. However, just two days ago, on 24th of August 2018, another spill was called and Scott Morrison was elected leader, beating Dutton 45 votes to 40. So now we have another PM. What a country we live in, eh? The Prime Ministership has become a revolving door. The Chinese Communists must be having a great laugh. They love to see democracy in turmoil. With all its flaws, the Chinese Communist Party could be assured of one thing – its stability. A stable government is a good government, in that a stable government can get things done. In Australia, the fact that the office of the Prime Minister has become a revolving door means that the government can rarely focus on good policy implementation. Instead, due to the influences of social media and the like, the government focuses more on popularity and how to win the next election. It's a complete farce. With an unstable government comes an unstable economy. Investors become uncertain of future policy and therefore choose to invest elsewhere. Political apathy grows as the people who were voted in are quickly voted out by factions in their own party. The population start to lose faith in the government. Policies that were promised at election time simply cannot be implemented due to political instability. It's harder to pass legislation as leaders are too busy maintaining their own job and fragile party room coalitions than coming up with good policy. Instability equals stagnation. The BBC has called Australia the coup capital of the democratic world. We have become a world fixated on social media. Just as online video creators are chasing the most likes and number of views, so too are politicians. It has become the driving force of the modern Australian politician. Populist politics has taken hold. An interesting observation was made by journalist Hugh Rimminton stating that no Australian Prime Minister has served a full term since Twitter was invented. I think that's a sign of the times. Social media is at least somewhat to blame. Constant political opinion polling reported by the media certainly does not help. Queensland paramedics have stopped asking patients, who is the Prime Minister of Australia, to test their mental acuity. Of late, people of sound mind can get this wrong. It wouldn't surprise me if Australia is added to a Chinese political textbook as an example of why democracy does not work. Political instability, constantly changing leaders, inability of the government to bring about any significant change. Is this democracy? Or are we living in something simply called democracy? 
Governments of the last decade have frequently put their own political gain ahead of the national good. Short-term policy stances are the norm. Many politicians seem to be unaware of the concerns of the common man. Politics is seemingly ruled by those who can offer the biggest political donation, such as big business and mining magnates. Do the politicians actually care about the average Australian anymore? Are we a democracy or some kind of monetocracy? Although voting in Australia is compulsory, I have no interest in voting anymore. It doesn't achieve anything. We've set up a system where it doesn't matter who we vote for. Ultimately, the parties choose their own leaders mid-term without considering the will of the Australian public. Australian politics is clearly broken. We pay these people a lot of money to govern the country, but instead we get a group of spoiled school children fighting in the schoolyard. The system will continue to deteriorate unless some radical changes take place. However, the elected elite don't want the system to change, so any real change will be hard to bring about. The biggest problem stems from the fact that the ultimate goal of our career politicians is to win. That is, they want to be elected and to control the parliament. Their goal is not to serve the people, but to win elections. What do I think will happen in the future with regard to Australian democracy? I don't know, but I presume technology will ultimately serve a role. People can't be trusted to rule. They serve their own self-interests. They are greedy and even despotic at times. I think we will continue to see our system deteriorate until one day the people will have had enough. Scott Morrison may have achieved his greatest dream, but he certainly has a big mess to clean up. I hope we don't head down the same road as countries such as China and Russia, where their governments are well on their way to becoming full-blown authoritarian regimes. This seems to be a growing trend around the world at the moment. Anyway, I wish Australia the best of luck, and hopefully we can fix this broken system and fix our so-called democracy.